Hi, my name is Jason Nikoff, and I'm an associate professor at Tennessee State University. In this video, I'm going to go through the different steps required to use drone deploy if you are creating a flight plan for your drone, or if you're uploading images from your drone, or if you want to analyze some of those images that you've uploaded. So to start off with, I'm on the drone deploy homepage and I'm going to go ahead and log in. So you need some sort of an account in order to, to be able to, to log into, into your, your portion of, of drone deploy. Okay, so now I'm into my account. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. And so you can see the, the project button right there. And so it wants you to locate uh, where your project's going to be. So uh, you can give a specific address. That's usually the best thing to do to really be able to pinpoint the area. But for my purposes, uh, I'm just going to give kind of a general area. And, uh, and we're going to, to create some maps based on that. Uh, so to start off with, we've, uh, once we identify the area, then we're going to click on this button that says create project here and you can name the project whatever you want to. And you can see on the top portion of the screen, we've got some different options, fly, upload, explore, and report. Uh, we're going to use fly here because we're working on the flight plan. And so on the left-hand side, there are also some different options. And for creating our map that we wanna use, we're going to click on maps and models. And so it's going to show uh, a square here and we can zoom out a little bit um, to be able to see the area a little bit better. But basically, you just kind of click and drag uh, around the area and you can, you can get as, as specific and as detailed as you want to with the option here. And so once you've identified the, the area that you want to click on, that you want to take images from, then uh, you can, um, you're basically done. Uh, if you notice on the left hand side, we've got some different things where it's uh, based on the area that we've identified, it tells you how long it's gonna take to capture images, it tells you how big the area is, how many images are gonna be collected, and then how many batteries you're going to need to be able to do this. So that's really important. Um, once the, the, the battery, the first battery is drained, it'll give a signal and then it will come back home from where it took off from. You can change the batteries and then it's as easy as clicking a button and the drone will resume where it left off from. So you can see with the area that we've defined, you've got these green lines which indicate the path that the drone is going to fly in order to take those images. And so once you put the new battery in, it's just going to fly back to that path that it left off from and continue on with, with taking those, those pictures. And there's nothing, it's very user friendly, there's nothing that you have to do but click on a button and it'll resume flight. And so one thing, uh, one other thing I wanna point out is the altitude here. So you can adjust this to whatever you want it to be and this will be programmed in you know once you hit go the drone will go to that that altitude and it'll capture all the images from that altitude and so you can like i said you can change this depending upon what you want to do obviously the higher the drone is in the air the lower the resolution is going to be so keep that in mind um you know we're at one inch per pixel here and obviously the the lower you you fly um the better the resolution but then also the longer the amount of time it's going to take and then the the more battery power that it's going to require okay so now let's say that we've we've flown the flight plan we've captured all the images and now we want to upload them into the drone deploy software so that's going to be the next step and so for that, we're gonna click on the upload button here and click on new upload. And then again, you can call the, uh, you can call the map that you're gonna create uh, whatever you want. And then you're going to select the photos that you wanna use. So I've already got some photos that I've used in the past. 
um, that I that I collected in the past, and so I want to um, use those all of those images to create the map. And so I highlight all of them and I click open, and then what it's going to do is it's going to check the images and then basically it's going to show me where all the images were taken from. And so you can see all the different blue dots represent the, the images that were collected. And then there's this button down here where you can identify that you want to upload the images or not. And so I'm going to go ahead and click upload images. And so it'll take probably, you know, a, a few hours to, to upload those images because there are uh, quite a few. And then, once they're uploaded, we'll come back and uh, we'll set things up for the analysis of the images. Okay, so now we've gotten our stitched map. And so basically it took about two to three hours for the images to upload into drone deploy. And then it took about one to two hours for the images to get stitched together into this map, which we call an ortho mosaic. And so you can see it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty well defined here, the, uh, the image that we have now based on all of those stitched images. And so since we have so many of those images, uh, we've got really good resolution. So to start off with, I just wanna note that uh, on the upper header here, we are under the Explore tab now, which has some different features that I'm going to talk about. So first of all, you know, we can just very basically zoom in. And like I said, we've got some really good resolution. We can see, you know, down to the, to the plant level. Uh, this was a tobacco field that we flew the drone over. And so besides that, however, there are a few other features that I'm gonna talk about within this uh, Explore tab. So you can see over on the left-hand side, there's uh, plant health and there's elevation. So if I turn on the elevation map, you can see that um, it's defined by uh, this color scheme here where the upper elevation areas are identified here in red, and then the colors change until you get down into uh, a blue color, which is indicating the, the lower elevation areas. So this is something that could be useful depending upon uh, the situation that, that you're working in. The other thing that I want to show, if I turn off the elevation map and turn on the plant health map, so now you can see a little bit different color scheme, and this indicates essentially the greenness that's out there in the field, and uh, you're looking at, you know, plant cover, plant health, those kinds of things. Now you can see the, the really dark red areas here are basically where we don't have any sort of plant material. This was actually a, a hay, hay field. And so this was recently cut, and so there's not really any vegetation that's out there. That's why it's so red. And then, but then if we look at the tobacco field here, you can start to see some, some green and some individual uh, plants and everything. And this can help to provide some contrast where you can see a little bit better some of the trouble spots. So here we've got a bare spot in this area. We've got some other uh, more bare areas in this area as well. And so like I said, this can give a little bit better definition to, to some of those areas. And then there's also another feature with this plant health where if I click on this little arrow here, if you turn on the zones feature, then you can basically, this will essentially help you to, to pick out those trouble spots even easier. So if I wanna limit the uh, exposure of this, uh, of this feature, to you know those areas that are are worse in the field i can move this threshold down and you'll start to see some more of these areas um kind of show up in that field and be a little bit better defined and so basically with the um with the map that i've got here you can see the tobacco field uh, mostly is green and then you can see that there are some certain areas that are a little bit more uh, trouble areas. And so if I were to zoom in on this a little bit more, you've got these, uh, these off-white areas that indicate you know, that things aren't as good as the rest of the field. And if I turn off the plant health imagery, 
and we kind of look at it a little bit more. If I zoom in here, uh, so this was the area that was kind of defined there. And if you look, you can see that basically the there's a lot larger plants uh, over in this area, and the plants that were in the 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 worse area, they're they're a lot smaller, and then they get larger again. So in this area here, there's something going on, whether it's a fertility issue or a compaction issue. This is a zone here that you might want to go out and get into the field and and try to pinpoint what exactly it is. Uh, so it's it's useful in, in identifying some of those trouble spots. Like I said, that zone area mapping is, is really pretty useful for that. So another feature that I want to talk about that's part of the drone deploy package is uh, an app that's part of it called Agrimo. And so the Agrimo app is right here. And basically you can do some additional analyses with that app. And so what you do is you basically define the area that you wanna work in, and then you're going to click on some of these different analyses. So you can do things like plant population, stand count, weed analysis, pest damage, and, or disease detection. And so essentially you, you click on that, you click submit the report or submit the analysis, and then in a couple of days, you'll get the analysis back for these specific analyses that are shown here. So like I said, just some additional information. And again, these are all using that uh, video camera, that camera that comes with the drone itself, no special sensors or anything. So one other thing I wanna point out, there's this uh, share button down here. And so if you click on that, that allows you to essentially create a, a web link that you can share with other individuals. And what they'll be able to do with that is a lot of the same things that we're doing with the program right now. You can zoom in and zoom out on the, on the map. You can also uh, use the, the features that, that we're using here. Um, not necessarily a Grimo, but you can turn on and turn off the, the plant health function and the elevation function. Uh, basically, the, nobody's gonna be able to change anything on your map, but they'll be able to, to look at some of those different features just like we're doing now. So that's kind of a nice option to be able to share it with other folks so they can see uh, what you've got on your, on your land. And then uh, the export feature, basically with this one, you can uh, email a uh, a JPEG file or a PDF file or one of these uh, GeoTIFF files to yourself. And that's another way that you can share some of this information with other individuals. So that covers uh, all of the different types of things that I wanted to go through with respect to using Drone Deploy and, and how to upload the images and how to create some of these maps. If you've got any, any questions, uh, my contact information is at the end of this video. So please feel free to reach out and get in touch with me if you have anything that, that you want more information about. All right, thank you very much.